want to thank the Lord God for this opportunity to uh, stand before you, and I just appreciate the saint. Yeah. You lifting up your voices and singing to God. He is Amen. the audience yeah. and not us. Yeah. And so it's just a great thing to be in the presence of the Lord and to be in the house of the Lord with the yeah. saints yeah. Uh, and hearing you singing. And we are just, I am just filled today and ready to preach. Amen. 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 I better be ready to preach yeah. after all that singing and stuff that we've had. And uh, we just had a great time and, and God has just been so wonderful um, uh, to me. Um, it's great to see the Hubbards in the house. Yes. Yes. Uh, my confidant. Yes, Amen. Amen. My laborer, co-laborer in the vineyard. I just appreciate his wisdom. Uh, so much in common with uh, his congregation and how they started and how we started. And uh, it's good to have brethren that have gone through uh, it already. Right? And you can share wisdom with and being able to uh, help you through it. So, a uh, preacher needs somebody to preach to him. Yeah. Amen. And I tried to get him up here, but he says, no, nah, it's your turn today. Uh, we going to come here to hear what the Lord has to say, and I just want him to know and his family. Uh, just appreciate uh, Brother Hubbard and his ministry and his hospitality uh, and uh, um, how he treated us when we came uh, to, to uh, District Heights, and he just treated us well. And so uh, I just love you, Brother Hubbard. Sister Hubbard, please appreciate you. Very much. Very much. Um, Sister Wilkie, and you know I love you too. <laughs> My best friend. And I just wouldn't be here without Sister Wilkie. Amen. Um, Amen. So I, I, I take her with me when I can take her with me. And she's always with me in spirit. And so my confidant, and I just appreciate her as well. Uh, my best friend, uh, my wife, and I'm just, um, uh, just glad to be in the body. I'm so glad I ran off the bus that day and chased her down All right. uh, and asked her for her, her number asked her what she'd like to meet the next guy. Right. <laughs> How you gonna turn that down? What woman gonna say, no, I don't want to meet a nice guy? So I had, I had my lines ready just trying to, uh, yeah, 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 black silk, that's what they call it. Uh, so I just had, I'm just glad uh, that she gave me her number. And what I did was I, I, I turned around so she didn't have anything to write on. And so I just turned around and I flexed my muscles in my back real hard. And, and you can do all the right. I just wanted to let her know that I was solid. You know what I'm so uh, so I, I, I just, when you remember those moments, you know, it's just a good thing to have uh, in my life. And I appreciate my family. Thank you for the prayers and the scripture reading. Uh, today. Um, if you have your Bible, um, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 through 6. Right. It was read in your hearing, and it says, Moreover, brethren, I will not that ye should be ignorant how that all of our fathers were under the cloud. One of the key words is fathers. Um, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized under Moses in the cloud and in, in, in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and all did, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. But. And you hate to hear that word sometimes. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust uh, after evil things as they also lusted. And there's more to that scripture that we will go over, but I just wanted to read the first six verses just to get you to this particular message. Living on the wrong side of history. Amen. Amen. Living on the wrong side of the history. I, I, I've been watching television and what's going on in Charlottesville, Virginia. I've been seeing the riots and the racism and uh, seeing all the chaos that's going on. And I'm not here to preach a history lesson uh, in American history. That's not what I'm here to do. I, I just going to use this as a hinge uh, to swing uh, for the message 
that will benefit uh, those who are in the body of Christ and those who want to be uh, uh, Christians. But uh, there has been numerous uh, debates about the Confederate flag mm -hmm. and its meaning and the impact that it has uh, on society. Uh, some say it's just, you know, a battle flag uh, of the Army of North Virginia. Now, others claim it's a political symbol. Uh, I don't know if you know about um, Harry Truman, um, desegregation of the armed forces. Uh, didn't want blacks and whites uh, serving in the armed forces together, this Confederate flag that we have. Uh, thank God we have a, a, a country that gives us our first amendment, Amen. Uh, Amen. give us the right to worship. Not everyone has that right. Um, so we, we are, that, that's a good thing that the United States uh, has done, but the United States wasn't always a union. Uh, it, it, was, it was divided, as you see it today, it's divided. And this Confederate flag is causing uh, a lot of confusion and misunderstanding because there are some who want to honor the flag because they claim that it is their forefathers' history. And there are others who are claiming that it should not be honored at all. And so, uh, hence the title, Living on the Wrong Side uh, of History. Uh, the Ku Klux Klan also uses this flag. Even though they have their own flag, uh, this flag comes up when it comes in dealing with race and segregation and white supremacy and uh, they keep this flag going as their battle flag. And even Mississippi has inherited this as their state uh, state flag, which now is a lot of emotional debates uh, going on. Uh, slavery is the greatest shame of our country. Mm -hmm. It is a shame that we have to live with the stain of slavery, but it's what it is. Uh, Abraham Lincoln fought the American uh, Civil War um, and to keep the union together. Um, but Abraham Lincoln, as time went on, uh, morally he became convicted that uh, whether it was uh, keeping the state together, either the whole states were going to be slavery or they were going to be free. And as he continued to move forward, uh, of course he signed the Emancipation of Proclamation freeing slaves by law. Notice I said freeing slaves by law, mm -hmm. mentally still right. slaves, but freeing slaves uh, by law. Um, uh, Abraham Lincoln actually quoted Matthew 12, 28, when he says a house divided against itself mm -hmm. cannot stand. He knew that it couldn't be half slavery and half free. You know, he said either it's going to be all one or it's going to be all the other. So he signed uh, the Emancipation of Proclamation. Um, the Confederate flag is a part of the United States False Fathers history that many people want to honor. There is a statement, and I want you to, I want to read it because I wanted to quote uh, the president of this confederate, the, well he wasn't the president, he was the vice president. Um, his name was Alexander Stevens, or Stephen. And this is what he said, he was the vice president of the confederacy. Our new government is what he said, was founded on slavery. Its foundations are laid, its cornerstones rest upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal to the white. The slavery, submission to the superior race, is his natural and normal condition. This flag represents what the intention was, and that is to what? To separate, it's about hatred. Mm -hmm. And all who want to honor this particular flag is honoring on the wrong side of history. Mm -hmm. I wanna read this for you, this is in Ezekiel uh, chapter 18, verses 19 through 24, um, and when you honor your forefathers' sins, you actually participate in their sin. I want to use this to bridge over to the Bible. It says in Ezekiel 18, 19 to 24, yet you ask, why does the son not share the guilt of his father? This is the NIV version. Since the son has done what is just and right and has been careful to keep all my decrees, he will surely live. 
The one who sins is the one who will die. The child will not share the guilt of the parent, nor will the parent share the guilt of the child. The righteousness of the righteous will be credited to them, and the wickedness of the wicked will be charged against them. But if a wicked person turns away from all the sins they have committed and keep all my decrees and does what is just and right, that person will surely live. They will not die. None of the offenses they have committed will be remembered against them. Because of the righteousness things they have done, they will live. Do I take any pleasure in the, in the death of the wicked, declares the servant Lord? Rather, I am not pleased when they turn from their ways and live. But if a righteous person turns from their righteousness and commits sins, commits sin and does the same detestable things which the wicked person does, they will live. Will they live, he says. None, they won't live. None of the righteous things that the person has done will be remembered because of the unfaithfulness they are guilty of and because of their sins they have committed, they will die. God saying that, in other words, that uh, sin is not inherited. Uh, sin is a transgression not a transmission of God's law transgression is something done against God's will transmission is something that is passed down sin is not transmitted it is a transgression because transgression is an act that's right mm -hmm. And y'all follow me? Transgression is an act. And if we act like our forefathers, if we are living on the wrong side of history, God will punish us. He says, now, if you are an unrighteous person and you do what I say, then uh, I won't remember. In other words, I'm not going to count or credit you those things that you've done in the past. That's good news. Amen. Yes, that's right. And that's, that's what I call the good news. That's Amen. the gospel. That's the good news. Amen. That all the things, the unrighteous things you've done in the past, God says, you know what, I'm not going to credit to you because you are living righteous. And the one who lives righteous will be, I will credit righteousness too if you live by my decrees. But if you are a righteous person, if you are a child of God, and you can and you do the unrighteous things, the reverse happened. Mm -hmm. Which means that all the righteous stuff you did, God won't remember. That's right. All right. Amen. Do you understand where we're going? Amen. So so when 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 they're trying to honor the Confederate flag, I'm switching back and I'm gonna come right back. When they're trying to honor the Confederate flag and honor hatred, mm -hmm. honor segregation. Put folks down. They're living on the wrong side right. of history. The right side of history is to be united That's right. and to be together and give people the right of worship. That's the right side of history. Well, for Christians, it's the same thing. All of us have been baptized. We have been baptized out of of, of, of captivity and we're going to get to that but I want you to understand something that even as Christians we must live on the right side not the wrong side of history are y'all following me so just pay attention for a minute these are and I'm going to keep going uh, after I show you this these are uh, 11 of those states I think Missouri uh, and, and Kentucky they were added in uh, and made it 13 confederate states these are the ones that voted to keep slavery that's what the fight, because when Abraham Lincoln mentioned that the country divided against itself can't stand, what was dividing the country? Slavery. Mm -hmm. That's what was dividing the country. Now, of course, uh, 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 and, and, as time went on, they all reunited with the states uh, as time went on, but these were the states that warred against the northern states, the southern states. They were warring because they did not want to give up slaves. And the way that they were treating slaves and, and treating people was about hatred. We were property. We, weren't, we were not people. That is a terrible history to
to have. Are y'all following me? This is the we are not bored in sin. And if you look at 1 John 3, 1 through 4, um, it talks about, this is what I want you to point out. Whosoever committed sin does what? Transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So therefore, transgression is an act. It is not sin is passed down from father to child. The consequences can happen. Father alcoholic, it can affect the family. Father abuser, mother abuser, it can affect the family. But the sin of the parent does not pass down to the child. You are the one that God holds responsible for your own actions. You are the one that has to decide. You can't use your parents' history to continue to live in sin. You can't use your parents' history to be abusive because my parent was abusive. You can't live on the side of your parents because my parents were alcoholic. You have to make a decision on your own of what side of history you're going to live on because all of us have some kind of history. Are y'all following? Amen. Amen. So if you notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul uses uh, a typology of uh, the Old Testament. And why is he using the typology of the Old Testament? Because Israel was God's first son. He brought them out of Egypt. Y'all remember? Mm -hmm. They were in captivity. Egypt was a type uh, of sin. Uh, it was a type of oppressor. God heard their cry, pulled them out of Egypt, told them to put the blood on the door. He went and he passed over when judgment came. God pulled them out. Moses walked them through the Red Sea. They were all what? Baptized under Moses. They were in the wilderness. They got a law that God had given them, and they walked in that law. So this was God's first son. And Paul is using this as a typology for the Corinthian church to remember the history of their forefathers. This is what he says. Moreover, brother, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that our what? Fathers were what? Under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were baptized under Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Just like they were brought out of uh, captivity, Jesus brought us out of captivity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just like they walked through the Red Sea and were baptized under Moses, we were baptized uh, in the water when we became uh, dead to sin and became Christians once we came out of the water. So Paul is using this typology to show, listen, you weren't the first people of God. That's right. Yes. You have a history. As people of God, you have a history. And I want to share something about the history that Corinthian church had an issue because they had issues all through that congregation. And one of their issues, and Paul brings up, are these particular things. That he said first, uh, as he continues his typology, he says, and did all eat the what? The same spiritual meat. They were all together. He blessed everybody the same. He didn't leave anybody out. He wasn't a respecter of persons. Everyone was blessed. And they did all drink from the same spiritual rock or the same spiritual drink for that drink, for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Jesus Christ. That's when Moses, they were asking for water. Who provided them water? Jesus. Who provided them manna? Jesus. So what we're looking at is Paul saying, listen, you weren't the first church. Come on, preacher. There was a church in the wilderness. I read that. Yes, sir. Okay? So you need to listen because guess what? Not all of them made it. That's right. Come on, preacher. Even though I brought them out of Egypt. Yes, sir. Even though I passed over them. Even though I walked them through the Red Sea. Even though I gave them the law. Not all of them made it to the promised land. Matter of fact, only two men, Joshua and Caleb. So the parents sinned so much to an irritated God where he would not let them even see the promised land, and all their parents died in the wilderness. So the wilderness became a type of grave for the disobedient. 
And Paul is reminding them, don't think that once saved, always saved. Don't think that you can continue right. to live and do what you want to do, live how you want to live, think how you want to think. Don't you continue to do that because we have a, a record of our forefathers yeah. Yeah. and what they did and how Paul is trying to make sure that the Corinthian church does not live on the wrong side of history. He says, but with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our what? Examples. They are examples. They are examples to the intent where we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. You know, we got a problem with trying to accommodate uh, or trying to be to fit in with worldly behavior mm -hmm. in the church. We think it's okay to just fit in with worldly behavior and God's grace is going to continue to cover us. You know, there's some, there, they had some issues. One of the issues that they had, this is something that I just pointed out. You remember the murmuring. This is why some of them didn't make it. Because God had gave them man. Mm -hmm. And they were complaining that we always got bread. We always got bread. We want something else to eat. I had salmon back then when I was in Egypt. I, I had crabs. I'm just saying. I, I was just eating good when it was back in Egypt. You brought us out here to die. And they was complaining about the bread. So God gave them so much meat that he, he, just, he just overshadowed them with quail. Uh, but they were rejecting the bread. Y'all didn't get it. They were rejecting what God was giving them. They were complaining. They forgot where they came from. They forgot the plagues. They forgot all those things. And so those, these are one of the typologies that God, that, that's in the Bible. It's another one, you probably can't see it that well, but this is a calf. You remember when Moses came down off the mountain with the Ten Commandments and they, were, they rose up the plague, the Bible says, and that's what he mentions uh, in some of the texts, so this is what we're going to see. But I want you to understand that they had a history of sinning against God because of their position. They thought that their position was safe. And they lived and act and craved for evil things. And it's, it's amazing how... Because I'm not trying to call out something. You know, you just, you just hear stuff. Uh, and and, and I'll, i got to say some of it. You just hear, there are some things, I, I, I'll just put, i put me in. That's, what, that's the safest thing to do. So i change changed the name so that the answer I'm just going to put me in. When I, me and Sister Wilkie uh, got married, the job tried to throw me a bachelor party. Mm. Come on, preacher. Yeah. They knew I was a Christian, so they tried to sneak it mm. to get me in a position where I wouldn't deny all the strippers that they were going to bring to the bachelor party. Mm -hmm. But I caught on to what they were doing, and I didn't show up. Yes, sir. Amen. So they had a bachelor party without me. <laughs> I'm telling you what happened. Well, what I'm saying is that Christians have to separate themselves right. even if you lose friends. That's, That's right. right. Come on, preacher. That's right. You got to stand for what's right. We want to be associated with, with them so much that we don't realize that we repeat the history of our forefathers in the wilderness. Because when the Bible says they rose up the plague, that means that they took off the earrings and the gold. They made a calf, which was uh, which they worshipped in Egypt. Not only did they make a calf, they began to play sexually around the calf and worship it as if the calf brought them out. They're worshiping the same gods that Egypt worshipped as if Egypt took them through the took them through the Red Sea. They were accrediting their success and where they were to false gods. Come on, and that's what we do. 
when we live like our friends want us to live and we do things that they want to do just because we don't want to be ostracized by them, we begin to, uh, we begin to uh, kind of, what's the word I want to use? Um, we begin to fall into the trap mm -hmm. of not being disassociated. Mm -hmm. And then we start compromising our Christianity. Mm -hmm. We right. start compromising our position uh, that we had. Mm -hmm. And so when he says that uh, in verse, and you have your Bibles, uh, he says in verse 7, neither uh, be idolaters as were some of them. Paul begins to, this is one of the things that Paul starts pointing out. Here are some examples that happened to your forefathers that you need to make sure that you as children of God don't do. It says, uh, neither be ye idolatrous, and were some, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. That's 1 Corinthians 10, verse 7. They rose up to play. The second one says, neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day, 3,023. You probably can't see this, but this is uh, Baal was one of the gods. And the children of Israel went and worshipped with Baal. You remember Balak, Barak, if y'all remember that story, uh, uh, they, they, he tried to, remember Balak, Barak tried to, to curse the children of Israel? And every time he tried to curse them, he called Balaam was the prophet. And, and the prophet Balaam uh, said he couldn't curse them, but he gave them something. He told them how the, the children of Israel were compromised. He said, if you throw a party and you invite them, they will entertain the worship. So he invited them and they began to worship Baal. And Baal was a place where prostitution was a part of it. And so when they sat down and they ate the meal with them, it's just like you saying, you know, you come to my church. That, that's, that's like worshiping Baal. When we trade all worship services or trade churches as if every church, all churches are the same. The Bible says there's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism, there's one body, one father. There are no more lords than all fathers. There, there's no more spirits than all lords. There's only one church. And that's what people can't understand. Well, what do you mean it was only one church? All these churches out here. Well, in the church in the wilderness, there was only one church. Yes, all right, come on, preacher. If you weren't a part of the church in the wilderness, you weren't a part of God's people. That's right. Come on, preacher. So all churches aren't the same. That's right. But we are compromised. Well, I'll go to yours and you go to mine, and when you end up you going over there and they worshiping and you end up worshiping Baal. Come on, preacher. And then you come back over here to the Church of Christ and you jump back over and then you begin to worship Baal. And sooner or later people begin to leave the church because they don't they misrepresent how strong that influence is. Over here I says, I wrote a play over here. God doesn't want a religious experience for me. He wants a personal relationship. Amen. Religion is experiences. We don't come to church for the experience. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's an experience we have. You go to church and you have a great experience and you feel good about yourself. Church is not about having an experience. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's about having a relationship with God. That's right. That's right. That's what church is about, and that's important to the Lord. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 8, I just read 8, 9, it says, uh, Neither let us uh, tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. That's the serpents. This is a, you know this is where we got our hospital sign from, right? Yeah. Because... They had murmured and complained against Moses, and they really were complaining against God, and God sent fiery serpents, and the serpents bit, were biting the people of Israel, and they were dying off. They were dying off. And so he told Moses to, they came and crying to Moses uh, about the sin that they had committed, about the serpents, and, 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 and Moses, uh, God told Moses to make a brass serpent. I'm just putting this picture up here. Don't take it worth literally. But Moses makes a brass 
serpent and he puts it up there and all who looks at the serpent will be healed. The brass serpent that Moses put up. And if you remember, as he, he puts it up and Christ says, uh, if, if I be lifted up, as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so too will the Son of Man, what? Be lifted up, and I will draw all men to him. He's going to heal all men. But don't you know that the brass serpent had to be made? I want you to see the typology. The, the brass, in order to make a brass serpent, had to be, and it had to be beaten. The brass serpent had, you had to make a brass serpent, you had to beat it into shape. And Christ says, as Moses, Lifted up the snake in the wilderness. So too will the Son of Man be lifted up. Moses had to beat the brass snake to make it a the brass to make it a snake. Christ was beaten. That's right. That's right. So that we can be healed. Moses had to lift it up, and if they looked on the snake, they were healed. Because the thing that caused you uh the 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 death is the, is, is the same thing that you're gonna have to face to be healed. You're going to have to face your sins if you want to be healed. And Christ said, if he be lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him. But this is their history. Why? Complaining. In the church. We ain't doing this. Or we should do this. And we're not doing that. And this should be this. And this should be that. Or how come and this and that? And this and this and that. And we complain. We don't even realize that we're on the wrong side of history. Amen, somebody. I'll bet this is. Verse 10, you can't see that, but that's all you need to see. That's, that's all I want you to see. It says, neither murmur ye as some of them. He's going back to the forefathers again. Also murmuring and were destroyed of the destroyer. This is a picture, and you can't even see it. If you look real close with your bionic eyes, you'll see Pharaoh right here and his son. This is the death angel. A picture of what it may have looked like. I don't know. But it gives a visual of when God came and the death angel is the destroyer. He's destroying sin. And he came through Egypt and he took all the firstborn who did not have the blood on the door. That's the destroyer. It's the death angel. And, and Paul is saying, listen, everyone who came out of Egypt, because of their murmuring, because of their complaining, because of their faithlessness, not trusting God, when God said, go and take the land, they didn't refuse to take the land. Because of all the things that have taken place, sent the death angel to all their fathers in the wilderness, and they never made it to the promised land. And Paul is saying, don't live on the wrong side of history. Just because God has brought you a mighty long way, just because you were baptized in the, in the watery graves of baptism, you are now Christian, you have the grace of God, you have God's favor. Don't take that stuff for granted. Don't think once saved, always saved. Don't, you, you can't earn it, but you got to be faithful. you got to be loyal. And if you don't have that works without faith, then your faith is just as dead. Right, right. That means your faith doesn't have any character to it. God says, Paul says, listen, don't live on the wrong side of history. The church is only one. In the wilderness. There was one church, and everyone else was outside of the church. If one came into the church in the wilderness, they were called a proselyte. But they had to come into that one church. God did not give his law to everybody. He gave his law to uh, his children, those who had brought out of Egypt. He's brought out of sin. And we are just like our forefathers, just like Adam. There are two sides. You have the first Adam, which was one that was made from the ground. But then you have the second Adam, which was a quickening spirit. And the Bible says 
that if you're going to live by fleshly desires, then you're living on the wrong side of history because you're living out your father Adam. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you walk in righteousness, if you walk in the spirit, you're living like the second Adam. Yeah. That's right. Which is Jesus. Yeah. Uh, what side yeah. are you going to make your history on? What side are you going to live on? There's so many things that distract us in the church that have been distracting us. The Moors thing. We got a preacher's meeting coming up on Tuesday because uh, as a, if there's a wolf in the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. About blackness, pro-blackness, everything is pro-blackness, pro-blackness. And the Bible says that the flesh profited nothing. No, that's right. right. That's right. But everything is just black this, black that, black this. Because we've been so oppressed for so long that we are going to one side of the pendulum to the other side of the pendulum. And that has nothing to do with spirituality. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Nothing at all. Amen. But our men and our women are falling prey to this. And it's not new. There's nothing new under the sun. There's different ways of different things, and people are replacing their ethnicity with Christianity. Amen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Living on the wrong side Amen. of history. Ain't nothing wrong with promoting or speaking against or speaking with or trying to support or whatever group you want to support. But it can't take the place of Christianity. Amen. Living on the wrong side of history. How do I know that? Because the Jews claim to be God's people just because they were Jewish. Mm -hmm. That's right. God says, Paul says, the Jew is the one that's a Jew on the on the inside, not the outside. That's right. So it's nothing new. That's why I said this is not anything new. All the stuff is in the book. All the stuff is in the Bible. We need to start preaching and making things relevant to today because there are some things that people think the Bible is just so out of touch with reality on, that we preach it as if it can't be understood. Right, right, mm. right. We talk the hermeneutical, typological development. Of, we talk all that stuff. Just preach the word of God. Right. Teach it plain so people can right. change. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Because if they don't believe that they can change from reading it, they're not going to read it. That's right. Someone told me that there's hypocrites in the church. That's why they don't come. I said, well, there's hypocrites in the strip club. You go there. That woman don't love you. You gave your $20. There's hypocrites at the ball game. You ain't worrying about that. They use it for excuses. That's right. Come on, Brian. That's right. That's in the Bible. <laughs> Come on. The Bible, we got to make this thing plain. We got to speak to our men. That's right. Our young men are being taken away taken from their away. families. That's taken right. away. And it's a shame. Because young men, we, we raised up. We don't want to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. We're scared to speak out and we're scared to, to ask for help. We want to make it look like we got everything together. That's right. We're taken out of our homes. Families broken. Women raised to take care of numero uno. They don't, they don't, don't you depend on no man because a lot of these single moms doing the best that they can and then they don't you depend on no man. So guess what happens? They don't depend on the man. They got their own car. They got their own house. They got their own everything. And so what it does, it takes away what God has said about the man to be able to lead the home. You can't lead me because you don't have anything. I'm with the devil. And so we go out and we sell drugs and steal and try to get the, 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 the income that we need to be able to make us look like we got everything going on, but we don't. Right. 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 That's right. We can't even raise our own children. Mm -hmm. That's right. What side of history are we living on? Amen. That's right. Jesus is our example. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. The spiritual man can take care of everything. Race, it takes care of every ethnic group, it takes care of whatever it needs to take care of. God says everything pertaining to life and guidance is in this book. But we have to be able to preach this book so people can understand it. Stop preaching over folk heads. Mm -hmm. And preach so they can understand it. What side of the history are you living on? I'm worried about. The churches. And I'm glad we're having this study on Tuesday. The preachers meet about Gnosticism. 
because people believe that knowledge you can spiritually uh, you can actually fix your own self if you have enough knowledge mm -hmm. and that way you don't need God mm -hmm. what side of history are we living on? Well, that's not new either Paul came and comes and I says I, I see a guy that says the unknown God and Paul says I know who that is the unknown God is the Lord and Savior our Father Jehovah is Jesus Christ. And as Christians, we got to be able to understand, we got to start living on the right side of history as Christians so that we can be examples to those who are not Christians. Sometimes we destroy our testimony so much we can't preach to them. Because we cuss at the job just like they, they, they cuss at the job. So what's the difference? I can't, I, they should be able to tell a difference between a Christian and a, and a non There's got to be something about you that's different than everybody else. Why are you coming to church if you're not changing? Right. That's, right. That's, right. That's right. There's a difference between spiritual preaching and motivational preaching. That's yeah. right. Yeah. There's a lot of motivational speakers that can give you the joy and the courage and the, the, the power to be able to go out and feel good about yourself, but it doesn't change anything. That's right. What side of history do you live in? That Confederate flag was about here. <coughs> And I'm not saying America's all right, but thank God we have laws that where we can worship God Amen. Yeah. as much as we want to worship God. Amen. We have the freedom of speech where we can preach. Amen. If we want to go out and preach anywhere, we can do that. Uh, and everything that man puts his hands on, he's going to mess it up. Yeah. But still, we're living in a country that has the freedom that at least will accept anybody that comes in. That's right. Don't worry about Donald Trump. That's right. Amen. That's right. The reason he's in office, as I said before, is because God wanted him. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. He's in control. Do not think that God has, has lost control. That's, That's right. one of Satan's lies. Mm -hmm. That's right. To make you think that God is not in control. But he is in control. Oh, I've never there's so many people trying to come together. Now you have the same ethnic groups fighting each other about slavery. Because I didn't see a whole bunch of black folks out there. Yeah. Mm. That's right. I'm just telling you what I saw. Mm -hmm. People are standing up. Mm -hmm. That's right. And speaking out. Sports figures are now standing up. And they're speaking out and they're supporting uh, those who have, uh, they're not uh, standing for the flag or they're sitting or putting their hands up in protest because they want the country to change. They want everybody to be equal and not looked at as black or white. We just all want to at least be able to respect each other and get along. That's a good thing. That's right. Thank you, Trump, for promoting that. Because God is using you. It didn't start with Trump. It's been doing it since Obama was in office. Probably even before then. But still, our history of slavery is a stain. And so it is with the Christian. That's right. You're who you were before you became a Christian should be something that you don't want to repeat. That's right. Amen. Amen. It should be something that you don't want to live on anymore. That's right. Now you can live on the right side and be like Paul. You can be schizophrenic. You're trying to do what's right, but you can't. You're doing what's wrong, and I try to do what's right, and evil is present. And every time I try to do what's right, it's not me doing it. It's somebody else. It's something like Paul crazy. But he has an internal battle. He's not crazy. Right, right. He's been transformed. He has another spirit. And he doesn't want to live on that side of history. That's right. That's right. That's right. What about you? If you're not a child of God, you don't have a choice but to keep repeating history because you're not a child of God. You haven't been transformed. You haven't been baptized for the remission of your sins. The transgression is an act and each act is for each individual so sin is not transmitted I know you have churches and Catholic churches and baptizing babies because they think we're born in sin no 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 sin can't be transmitted transgression is each individual will transgress at some point in time so God has provided, provided a way out what's the way out Christianity is a way for you to break the chains of slavery of That's sin. Right. amen amen That's right. You can first have to hear the word of God. Amen. You got to believe, which means 
there has to be some action behind it. That God is who he say he is. That Jesus Christ is both God and man. He came, he, he came to die for he is the physical bread. He is the spiritual yeah. bread that has come down from heaven that That's we right. need to partake of. And this Jesus Christ is both Lord and Savior. And now he wants to be your master. And he wants you to become a child of God. But you got to hear, you have to believe, you have to repent of your sins. You have to decide that the words that are coming out of the Bible are the words of God. And it has convicted you to move to be baptized. Amen. You're baptized in the water and grave of baptism after you've confessed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Your sins are washed away. And God begins to operate on your character. And as he operates on your character, you become more and more spiritual and you become sinless. You will sin less, not sin less. But God does not look at you as a sinner. And sometimes we condemn ourselves. Well, I'm just a sinner. I'm not a sinner. I know I sin, but I am a child of God. There's a difference between me saying, I'm a sinner. The Bible divides a sinner from a child of God who sins. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, I sin, but I have an action. Yeah, I'm guilty of sinning, but I have a lawyer. Mm -hmm. That's right. That pleads my case, and he's the judge, and he's the jury. So it's all fixed. You can say what you want to say about me, that I have the cases fixed. I am acquitted, and therefore I'm not living. My life on the wrong side of history. Right. That's right. I'm going to live it on the right side of history. And that's the righteous side. Yeah. Right. Even though I may make my mistakes, yeah. I don't want to live like that. That's right. Living on the wrong side of history. Please don't do that. Yeah. Paul gives a typology of the old fathers and says, this is how we should live. If you're not a child of God or you are a Christian and you just need to make some changes in your life, this is the time you can do it. Let's all sing the same song invitation. Let's enjoy. And I don't wait.